Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, May 25th. I am here in the Memorial Garden at Church, a place I did not expect to be today, to record a message I did not expect to record. And I'll begin with a verse that's been on my mind for the last 24 hours or so from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians when he reminds his readers that we are all members of the body of Christ. When one member suffers, all of us suffer together with it. And I know that all of us right now are suffering with the people of Uvalde, Texas, where yet again, a massacre has taken place. 21 people gunned down, 19 of them children. It's sickening to say that, and it's sickening to realize that this has become so common in the life of our nation. We, of course, know where Jesus Christ is right now because he is there with those people. He's with those children who survived but will forever be traumatized by what they experienced. He's there with those shattered families, those heartbroken people who will never be fully healed in this life and then in this world. Jesus is embracing them with love and compassion even at this moment. And if nothing else, we can join in that act of compassion. We can feel the grief of those people, the horror of those people, and in the spirit of Christ, at least give voice to the unspeakable pain that they are right now living through. Now, living in this world is certainly one way that the Spirit of Christ can reveal herself to us and teach us what it means to be compassionate. But I don't believe that compassion is the only way that we can find Christ in such a terrible tragedy. There are other ways as well. But before I say ways that I think we can discover Christ, let me point out one way that we cannot find Christ, one place where Christ will not be. And that is in what Paul describes as the powers and principalities. That's uh, an expression Paul uses to refer to the powers that be, the political forces, the special interests, the ingrained patterns of behavior that together are willing to tolerate violence and injustice in order to maintain the status quo. Those are the powers and principalities at work to kill Jesus. The people and forces willing to crucify an innocent man so that things could just kind of keep on going along the way they'd always been going along. The New Testament is clear. We will not find Christ in those powers and principalities. Where we will discover Christ is in that reality that peacefully yet firmly and faithfully resists them and offers an alternative. That reality that Jesus in the Gospels calls the kingdom of God. That kingdom, as he describes it, is a surprising reality. It often starts small, even the size of a mustard seed, and yet can blossom and flourish in amazing ways. It is a kingdom that can seemingly to be defeated in one moment and yet rise to new life and renewed vitality in another. It is, Jesus says, constantly trying to break out all around us because it reflects the inexhaustible life and goodness of God. The kingdom of God is always coming. God is always trying to bring it about. And we are invited, we are charged to be part of that unfolding of the kingdom in this world. It is our privilege and our joy to work with the spirit of God and to become agents of the kingdom which we hope and believe will come in all of its fullness at the end of all things. To be participants in that kingdom means to be people of 
hope. And this is one way where I think we need to find Christ right now, <clears throat> as people of hope. I was reminded recently of a poem by Polly Murray. Uh, it's a poem called Dark Testament. And in it, she has a wonderful line. And she says, hope is the song in a weary throat. Hope is the song in a weary throat. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm tired of massacres. I'm tired of senseless violence. I'm tired of people saying that there's really nothing we can do about it. We just have to sort of accept it. It's just the way it is. We don't have to just accept it. I don't believe God just accepts it. Instead, we are to be people of hope, which means we are to be people who are actively trying to bring about God's kingdom and to give witness to a better way of being. So even as we feel deep compassion for the people suffering right now, I, I would invite all of us to also be people of hope. And I'd ask you to consider, how can you live that hope out in your life? Because there are ways we can do that through prayer, certainly, through service, through advocacy, through the ways that we vote, the policies of support, however we are moved by the Spirit, all of us can be agents of change, good and constructive change, so that we don't ever have to simply tolerate the kind of violence that we've just lived through in Uvalde, in Buffalo, and too many times. But instead be compassionate people who in the power of God's spirit are trying with Christ to usher in the kingdom. Remembering always what Jesus says at the very end of the Bible, see, I make all things new. The Lord is not done with us. We can be made new. Our society and our world can be made new. And we can be part of that. Part of the solution and not part of the problem. I wish you a blessed week. God loves you. I love you. Peace.